In today's video, we are going to talk about a pretty rare condition called functional neurologic disorder, which is a condition where you might have neurologic symptoms without a traceable or identifiable neurologic cause. Now, this doesn't affect a huge number of you on this channel, but it does impact enough of you that watch these videos that I feel like it's an important topic to cover. So in this video, we're going to go over what functional neurologic disorder is in a little bit more depth, what causes this, and as well as what causes some of the neurologic symptoms, and of course, some management tools that you can start using if you are someone that has this condition to start managing some of your symptoms. But most importantly, the main reason to make this video and put it on this channel is to go into why watching videos on this channel might not be the best approach. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. And with all that said, let's go ahead and dive into the topic of today's video, which is functional neurologic disorder. As I mentioned, it is a condition that presents with neurologic symptoms without damage to the brain or the spinal cord. However, it is a fun dysfunction in the way that the nerves fire or communicate from the body to the brain and from the brain back to the body, and that's where the real issue occurs. So basically, in a nutshell, if there's not damage to the brain or the spinal cord, but there is this kind of problem with how the messages are being communicated from the body to the brain and the brain to the body, it's kind of like it's a software system and not necessarily a hardware system. So a hardware system would be a stroke or MS or something that can show up on an image as a visible damaged area. This is more like a software system issue. So hopefully that analogy makes it make a little bit more sense as to how these symptoms, neurologic symptoms, differ from neurologic symptoms that might be caused from something like a stroke or MS. Now, I did say these this functional neurologic disorder is a rare condition, but it is important, again, for this channel because 5 to 10% of people that have functional neurologic disorder are referred to a neurologist for a full workup or for the potential that there is some kind of damage to the neurologic system when in fact it ends up being the software issue where there is no damage to the neurologic system. So 5 to 10% of cases have been referred to a neurologist where they have not been able to identify a neurologic injury. Now, why that's important is I do see patients or I get calls from patients or patients come to see me for an evaluation that will tell me that they think they had a stroke because somewhere someone had told them they had a stroke, but their MRI is normal. So in their mind, sometimes this gets a little confusing. Maybe someone early on that was looking at their symptoms might have thrown that word out there, but it never translated into actually showing up on an image. And the reason that's important is if you think you've had a stroke and you haven't had, actually had a stroke, that can be problematic. And that is sometimes how some people interpret their symptoms early on. And that never gets re-explained as to what the condition actually is. And in fact, I know that in some of the health healthcare systems that I've worked in, that in the busyness of an emergency department, if you come in with certain symptoms that present like a stroke, they give you a stroke booklet. So I have had patients walk in to see me that have a stroke booklet in their hand. However, they also tell me that their MRI or their CT scan did not show that they had a stroke. So just some things that I think are important to throw out there before we get into the weeds a little bit into more depth as to what this condition is. So let's go into some of the symptoms. But before I go into the symptoms, in the causes in the rest of this video, I want to make it very clear with no ambiguity whatsoever, your neurologic symptoms are 1000% real. So they are happening. A lot of times they're involuntary, meaning they're not in your control. And I want that to be very clear and I don't want there to be any confusion in any of the terminology that I use moving forward. 
They are one, your symptoms, your movement problems, whatever you are experiencing are 100% real. If you are someone that has FND, it just means that there is no damage with the hardware. It is a software issue, and I cannot reiterate that enough. There is just a misfiring of nerves or communication networks from the brain to the body and the body to the brain. And I'm probably going to repeat that a thousand times, and I'm not going to cut any of it out because I think it's so, so, so important and is probably the main reason I'm making this video. Some of the symptoms include functional limb weakness, involuntary movements such as tremors, jerks, spasms, and difficulty walking, speech, swallowing, and communication difficulties, episodes that look and feel like seizures, bladder symptoms, tics, abnormal sensation or lack of sensation, meaning you can't feel a part of your body, dizziness, thinking and memory problems, drop attacks, spasms of the face and eye, and loss of vision. Some associated symptoms are symptoms that typically coincide with some of those neurologic symptoms or those movement type symptoms are fatigue, pain, dissociative symptoms, meaning sometimes you just kind of feel spaced out, sleep problems, worry and panic, health anxiety, headache, low mood, irritable bowel syndrome, and complex regional pain syndrome. Now again, to reiterate, your symptoms are 100% real. We know that for a fact. The symptoms can sometimes appear suddenly and progress very rapidly. Symptoms can come and go and can be triggered by some other injury or medical condition. So now that we've talked about the symptoms and that your symptoms are very real, let's talk about why this happens in the first place. Why does your body start to do strange things that are outside of your control and can't be traced back to any type of an injury to your neurologic system? Well, this has to do with something that we call predictive processing. And predictive processing is when the brain anticipates and predicts motor and sensory experiences, constantly updating the predictions with new information. Now that's under normal conditions. That's what this predictive processing system kind of does. However, in some cases, this system that spoke intended to predict motor and sensory experiences fails to update with new information. So one explanation for this that we know of that occurs quite a bit, and that's fa phantom limb. So phantom limb is a condition when someone has an amputation. After that limb has been amputated, that person feels that that limb still exists. I've worked with lots of people with this. It's very problematic. A lot of falls happen. They get up in the middle of the night. They feel a limb or a leg that they no longer have, and they will get up and they will try and walk. Very problematic, but that is this predictive processing system failing to update with newer information, meaning failing to update that there is no longer a limb there. Now, there's phantom limb, but there's also functional limb. And functional limb is where the brain kind of predicts or updates the system to say that there is no longer a limb here. So phantom limb, limb is gone, the brain does not update and thinks there's still a limb there. Some say that with there's a functional limb that you either the brain perceives or updates saying that there is not a limb here. And in that case, you will lose sensation and lose movement. So faulty predictive processing probably explains the majority of the movement related symptoms, which is what I'm going to focus on because it's probably what most of you found this channel. You didn't find this channel by Google searching some of the tics or seizures or urinary issues that can occur with some functional neurologic disorders. So now that we understand some of the symptoms and potentially one mechanism as to why this happens, let's kind of dive into treatment a little bit. Now, just to be very clear, I'm not an FND expert. I don't see a lot of patients with FND. And in fact, in most cases, I would refer someone to a healthcare system where you could get an interdisciplinary approach to your treatment. So again, I don't treat a ton of this, but I will go into some of the physical therapy treatments that we know are somewhat beneficial 
in helping with the neurologic symptoms. But before we get into that, there is kind of a process that has to go into a well-rounded treatment approach. And that is first to very be very clear on some facts. You do have a condition and you are not the only one that has neurologic symptoms without an identifiable neurologic cause. So you're not out of the ordinary. You're not living on an island by yourself. There are other people that do have the, this condition. You are not making this up or imagining it. And as I've said several times already in this video, and I want to make it very clear, your symptoms are very real. You are having neurologic symptoms. Something else that is extremely important to internalize, and I hope for those of you that do have this, that you will watch this video probably more than once, is that your symptoms are reversible if they are addressed appropriately and that is going to get into the main purpose of this video and why I do not think watching this channel is probably the best tool in your toolkit in reversing your symptoms. It is not your fault that you have these symptoms. You didn't do anything wrong. You're not broken. You're not damaged. You have a real condition, but you will need to put in quite a bit of work, both mentally, emotionally, and physically to start reversing some of those symptoms. So that's just going to kind of lay the foundation before we dive into some of the physical therapy interventions that we know have been beneficial. So now what are some of those physical therapy interventions? I would say probably the one that is at the top of the list and probably the main reason I made this video is a graded exercise program, meaning meeting you where you're at today and kind of slowly ramping that program up with whole body movements. So if you are someone with this condition, you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I do some whole body movements, but in a ton of my videos, I would probably say more than half of my videos, I am breaking movements down into their very smallest components. And that is the absolute opposite type of movement retraining that you want to be doing if you have this condition. Something else that we would do with uh, your program or something that we do with physical therapy. Now I do treat this condition. I just don't treat it. I don't see a lot of cases of it, but I do treat it is that we use, we incorporate meaningful activities, meaning activities that are meaningful to you. That's extremely important. So getting your mind off of like a minute kind of movement problem, which I do a ton of on this video is zooming in on a movement problem, getting your mind off of like a little small movement problem and zooming out and incorporating something, an activity that has meaning and purpose to you into a whole body movement or training program. Now, the next one's really important. So I've talked about the stages of motor learning. We go through a thinking stage into where we get a ton of feedback and then we go into kind of like an intermediate stage where we're getting some feedback, but we're also able to reflect and identify some errors in our movement and come up with or correct those errors to produce normal movement. And then we move into a final stage, which is the automatic stage, which is where we're no long, longer having to think about a movement. We can just do it. We could be having a conversation. We could be talking on the phone. No problem. We can perform the movement. Now, therapy activities should focus mainly on automatic movements and not on cognitive movements. So not giving a ton of feedback, not breaking down a movement and describing every little intricate reason why that movement is faulty. And as a physical therapist, not giving you a ton of feedback as to how to correct that movement, but kind of work more in that automatic stage. So giving a ton of feedback as a physical therapist is not ideal. So if they're physical therapists that watch that, watch this channel, that's important for you to know is that giving a ton of feedback is not beneficial. And actually the people that I treat that have this, when I do that, it's extremely frustrating for them because they have had so many physical therapists kind of break their movements down and they don't, they have a hard, they have a hard time or a more challenging time kind of buying into the idea that I'm not going to give someone a ton of feedback. Some other things that we know are effective are what we call kind of like diversional activities. So getting your mind on something else and kind of off the move, getting your mind off the movement. So incorporating music, conversations. I 
tend to use conversation a lot. I've learned a lot about a ton of different things because I work with people that have all different kinds of backgrounds. And I love asking questions and I love learning about people's backgrounds, histories, jobs, hobbies. So I love to use conversation as kind of like a diversional activity, but you don't have to use that. You can use music or sometimes I give someone a cognitive task, like count back from 100 by multiples of three or starting with the letter A, give me a fruit out of every letter of the alphabet. So apple, banana, carrot, and people as they're performing some type of a movement retraining activity. They will have to be listing off vegetables or fruits. Sometimes I break it down into fruits or vegetables out of every letter of the alphabet starting with A. So that's kind of adding a cognitive task to a movement retraining activity. In therapy, we'll also identify like assistive devices. I've had people that are using way too many assistive devices and we kind of have to back off. And then I have people that can't even walk because they want to walk without an assistive device. And so in those cases, we have to figure out what Assistive devices are helpful, but aren't going to hold someone back. So that's where we do a lot of just kind of assessing and getting more information about your lifestyle. And again, identifying assistive aids that are going to help you, but not hold you back. And a big area that I know that I focus on, I know other people, physical therapists that treat in this area focus on are ways or strategies to give you agency over your symptoms. So in many cases, through a lengthy discussion, we can identify things that trigger your symptoms. And we can also identify things that make your symptoms better or make them almost non-existent and figuring out what those things are and incorporating those into your daily routine. So when your symptoms are high, you have a list to go to of things that you know reduce the symptoms, but you also know what your triggers are. And so sometimes a symptom can just be like a red flag that something else is going on. You're having some anxiety, you're fighting with someone, you're sleep deprived, you're fatigued, whatever. We can identify what the triggers are that create those symptoms because that can also be a a symptom can be a red flag to address maybe some area, other area in your life that you might need to focus on. So we spend quite a bit of time on that as well. But most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, what we do not do in physical therapy is give you like a structured strengthening program because your arm or leg isn't technically weak. Remember, the nerves, the predictive processing just has not updated. And so you might feel like a limb is weak or a limb is gone and it's not actually gone. Giving you a strengthening program is not going to address the root cause of your neurologic symptoms. And the other thing that we absolutely do not do is we do not break a movement down into small, teeny, tiny components. So If you are someone that has already been diagnosed with functional neurologic disorder, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you're someone that has neurologic symptoms and you've had a full neurologic workup and there's no identifiable neurologic cause, hopefully this will just get you curious. I don't want anyone self-diagnosing, but just get you curious as to what types of healthcare professionals you might want to reach out to. There are centers that specialize in this, and there are physical therapists that specialize in functional neurologic disorder. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to leave this left untreated. As I had mentioned earlier, I said I do kind of refer people out to a multidisciplinary team in a lot of cases, and part of that team is usually some component of psychiatry, not because you're a head case. So hopefully I've already dispelled that misunderstanding of this condition. However, we do know that there is a strong correlation with anxiety and depression, OCD, and some psychiatric conditions that trigger symptoms. And so it is extremely valuable to figure out what those triggers are. And psychiatry can help to address those triggers and those components of it to, in the end, of course, as all of you want that have this, reverse your symptoms. So psychiatry, extremely valuable as part of a multidisciplinary team. And then one last final point, I'm not a doctor, but since we are talking about treatments, There are no medications 
that treat functional neurologic disorder per se. However, there are medications that treat some of the comorbid conditions that I had talked about earlier, such as the anxiety, the depression, things like that. So it is important to know that if you're on a lot of medications to try and manage a lot of your symptoms, that might not be the best approach. What I see, the, the people that I see, is they are on a ton of medications treating conditions or movement-related problems that they don't necessarily have. I have a ton of patients that get regular Botox injections. Not a ton of the patients I see that have this condition. Most of them get Botox injections. A lot of them are on something for the spasticity, such as like baclofen or Neurontin for pain. And you're just, you've got this laundry list of medications, a lot of which have side effects that can minimize your quality of life. So just important to know there are no medications that are going to reverse function the symptoms associated with functional neurologic disorder. So just something to be aware of. Again, it's just a discussion that you want to have with the appropriate healthcare team. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, it, it affects a small percentage of the people that watch this channel. But if I can even impact one person, then this video was worth making and I am happy to do it. If you are someone that has been diagnosed with functional neurologic disorder, definitely comment below because there are other people that have this condition and I just want them to know that they're not alone and that there are other people out there that have this and maybe you can just share your experience and share maybe how you've reversed some of your symptoms by getting the appropriate care. So if you have this, definitely leave that in the comments below. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. If, since you're not getting any videos this week or any exercises this week in this video, if you want to get exercises throughout the week, head on over to Instagram and follow us over there where I post one to two videos every single week just to help kind of add a little flavor to your home exercise program. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can join our gold membership program. With the gold membership program, you get access to over 400 exercises specifically designed for neurologic conditions, not necessarily designed, and I have gotten this question, for functional neurologic disorder. And in fact, if you have functional neurologic disorder, I would discourage you from signing up for that membership because the exercises in that, in that membership program are really not going to help you. But with your membership, you will also get access to our monthly lives where you can submit questions and advance and we meet up once a month and you can get your specific questions answered. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.